Beacon Hill Sheriff's Department, reporting for duty. Will there be a season seven of Teen Wolf? Kiss, Mary, kill. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? It's your favorite oddball. Uh, you know, it's a lot cooler when I have the full makeup on and all that stuff, but you know, we tried. I know what you're thinking right now. Is he on the set of Teen Wolf? No, I uh, stole this on my last day of filming. I ripped it off the wall and ran home with it. Now it's at my house, which is cool for this video. Anyways, you guys, I promised we would do a Teen Wolf q and I'll probably do a bunch of series of these, but this is the first one. So let's get right into the questions. The first question. What was it like with Tyler Posey directing? Okay, so one of the greatest things about Tyler, there's many good things. You guys are all fans of Tyler Posey. You know what's special about him. What he's known for, it's, it's his energy. So filming with him as an actor, if there was ever a lull moment or, or the energy on set was coming down, maybe we were doing an 18 hour day or even longer, or after lunch, you know, when you're full, you're kind of tired. Posey was amazing at bringing the energy back up to here all the time. I mean, he just was a goofball and has, has insane amounts of energy. So it's, it's, it's intoxicating to, to work with him. You, you, you feed off that um, and he makes your performances better by doing so. So as an actor, even though he's the lead and he's in most of the scenes, there's plenty of scenes that he's not in, especially, you know, I was in the every time I was in the Beacon Hill Sheriff's Department, he wasn't always there. Um, or if I was out doing, you know, so I wasn't always working with Tyler. When he was directing, he was there for every scene. So every scene of that entire episode that he was filming, the energy was through the roof. It was awesome. You know, um, you're doing a scene, he was in Back by Video Village where the directors sit and, uh, Screaming, you know, that was amazing. I loved it more. You know, whatever it is that Posey does. It was awesome Another Who were you closest on set and who didn't you get along with? You guys are hoping for that juicy juicy gossip, you know, I got off the show and now I'm gonna spill the beans It's boring you guys. I'm so sorry, but I've said this over and over and over and over Jeff Davis set the precedent about Teen Wolf being a family. So I, pr I swear to God in my life God strike me down. If I'm lying, I'm not. I truly loved going to set every day. There wasn't a single person I didn't like working with. It really was a family. So I don't have any juicy gossip of like, you know, you hear of certain actors on certain sets where they can't even be in the same room when they're not filming. We don't have that. Um, and who, who do I, who are you closest with on set? Okay. I mean, over the years, I've, friendships have grown. You know, you, you guys have seen Tyler Hecklin, Ian and I travel Europe. We did it with Holland. Like I all have, I have funny moments with all of them. Charmin, uh, the, 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 the Carver twins. Shelly makes me laugh more than any, I mean, I could go on and on and on, but my go-to answer for this is always Lyndon Ashby. And that's because he was there on my first day and he made me feel comfortable all the way until the end. I, you know, he's my boss. I, I was stuck with him a lot. And uh, from day one, he made, he made me feel welcome and comfortable. Did you know Parrish was a hellhound? I had no idea. So when I first got cast as Parrish, he wasn't supernatural. We didn't really know. In fact, I heard whispers that Parrish was going to be a hunter, you know, that he was placed in the police department by Argent to be like a spy. With Crystal leaving the show, that kind of plan got mixed up, I think, and they kind of went the supernatural route. But one of my favorite things about playing the Hellhound or playing Parrish, I had no idea. So normally when you start a project, there's a beginning, middle, and end, you know how the project is gonna go, you kind of figure out your character that way and you can dissect it that. I had no idea with Paris. They were stringing me along just like you guys. And it was weird at times because I was worried that I was not doing the character justice, but they were just like, no, you're doing fine, just keep doing you. So it ended up being a lot of fun. I would go to conventions, comic cons, and talk to fans and they would say, you know, their ideas and I would bounce my ideas off them too. Like, oh, that's actually interesting. Or, I don't know, you know, and that was because I really didn't know. So I was able to say certain things or give my guess or what I thought. But once I knew, I knew probably only an episode before we actually found out. And once I found out, then it wasn't as much fun. And then there was kind of a, a little bit of a wait. So I couldn't, I go, mm -hmm, you're cool. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't say anything. Whereas before I was, I was bouncing ideas and, and laughing and having fun. So it was something unusual, but I really enjoyed not knowing kind of growing with the audience, uh, with the fans. It was it was a fun character to evolve together. Like we were kind of figuring it out as we go. It was a lot of fun. What was one thing you didn't expect from being on Teen Wolf? Easy, social media. Teen Wolf was a social media juggernaut, it still is. There were times at Comic-Con or other things where we were trending 
as high, if not higher, in tweets, responses, retweets, things like that, more so than Game of Thrones or the Avenger movies. Like what? That's crazy. And that's because of you guys. It was a social media whirlwind, something that I don't know if I'll ever experience again. I hope I will, but if not, it was, I mean, it was a fun thing to experience. I mean, doing live tweets, taking over people's Instagrams or, or, or Twitters was a lot of fun. It was crazy. I mean, it's, it's I, I have friends on shows that aren't anything like that. It was definitely something special. Social media, because of you guys, was bonkers. Were there animals on set? Uh, not enough. I wish there was more animals all the time, 24 seven, but there was a couple dogs. Uh, Lyndon brought his dog, Oscar, which is this big pit bull mix, I think. He's so sweet. Arden would bring Chewy, which is that her little fluff ball. And then Holland, of course, always had Fievel, who's another sweet, amazing little dog. I mean, she would just, she was so well behaved. I'm the type of person, if I go to a party and there's an animal in the corner, that's where I'm gonna be for the next hour. So anytime animals are on set, I don't mind at all. I think Posey brought his dogs a couple times. I wish he would've brought them more. I brought my Carl, my first cat Carl, uh, to set a couple times. He's a cat, so you can only do so much. I had him on a leash, I used to walk him. Uh, but once he got bigger, sets are huge. They're massive, so God forbid Carl like got spooked or ran away. I mean, it would've been impossible to find him, so I only did that for a little bit. Parking with Parrish was one of my favorite things. What made you do that and why did you stop? Uh, parking with Parrish was, it came about because on Team Wolf, you couldn't do spoilers. So new wardrobe, outfits, new characters, new places that we're filming at, you couldn't post pictures because you'd be giving spoilers and you'd get in trouble for that. I don't like you doing that. So Parrish was often, especially in the beginning, in a uniform 24 seven. So I could post pictures in my uniform and then Filming on sets, whether you're on location or at our stages, you're in massive parking lots because you need a lot of space. You know, there's wardrobe, makeup, the actor trailers, producer stuff, grips, all, all, the, all the equipment, everything comes off trucks. So you need a massive parking area. So I was always in, in parking structures and, and as dressed like a cop, I kind of just came up with parking with Parrish. It was a lot of fun. It was hard to, there's only so much you can do, you know? And, you know, there's only so many pictures I could do. So I tried to do it for a long time and then I stopped because the show ended. And also it was hard to get the, the wardrobe offset if I wanted to, if I had some good ideas, you know, it was hard to get my wardrobe away because they don't want you messing it up or losing it for obvious reasons. Who's your favorite ship? Shipping was huge, huh? Shipping was huge. Uh, Skiles, right? That's what it was, Scott and Styles. Listen, they're the bromance, the magic of the show. The reason why the show is so successful is the brotherly love and adventures that those two got on. There's so many other amazing characters, but they were the heart and soul of the show. So obviously that's my favorite ship. They're the, you know, I loved it. I loved the bromance that they had going on. What's the craziest thing a fan has done to me, to me, to me, to me? What's the craziest thing a fan has done to you? So I have terrible handwriting. I can't draw to save my life. And every once in a blue moon, someone will have me draw on a napkin or a piece of paper, either a quote or some sort of drawing. A lot of times I try to draw this sheriff star, but it looks like spaghetti at the end. I don't know, it's terrible. And then they go and get a tattoo of that. I can't tell you how honored I feel for someone to do that, but I also want to tell them like, do you feel bad that my handwriting's so bad and, and that my picture's terrible? Like maybe, maybe have them adjust it a little bit to make it look so bad. Uh, so if you're watching this and you have one of my tattoos, God bless you, and I apologize. <laughs> I think it's Who was your favorite Teen Wolf character? That's tough. There's been a bunch of good ones, but I think overall, just because, you know, I live in Los Angeles where there's a bunch of fake people, you know, they'll say something nice to your face and stab you in the back. Malia, because she would never do that. And there's a bunch of hilarious, just dry one-liners that she would say that, you know, most people, you would never say that, but it's just because she was aware of coyotes, you know, she didn't have that filter. Um, and I find that hilarious and I want more friends like that. I want them to tell me if I have stuff in my teeth or I want them to tell me if I smell bad. I want them to tell me if I'm being annoying. Like, Ryan, shut up. You know, I appreciate that. I appreciate the honesty. And uh, Shelly crushed that character. She's hilarious. So it's probably my favorite character, Malia. How did they do the fire and why did your pants never fully burn off? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, let's see, so the fire was fake. CGI, my eyes, when they glowed, was also see it was fake. It was done by computers afterwards um, in post-production. I, if I, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure the first season, the werewolves actually wore contacts. I think Hecklin was telling me that it burned and uh, that it, it was no good. So thankfully I didn't have to experience that and they just did it digitally. In terms of why my pants didn't fully burn off, 
I mean, that's a valid question, but I'm gonna say because it was on MTV and they didn't want to show nudity, I don't know. I mean, trust me, it's it's a silly concept where it's like, pfft, clothes burned off, but you got these Hulk pants on that never burn. And sometimes they change sizes, which is also funny. If you if you were a fan of the show, you might have noticed that. But yeah, no, I mean, it's just, you know, come on, it's it's cable TV. You can't, you can't, you can't show full-blown nudity, and you guys probably know you want to see that. I wouldn't. Not of me. Ugh. All right. How long did it take to film Team Wolf, and was it hard memorizing your lines? Do you mean filming the whole thing, or like an episode? So filming a whole season can take, depends on how many episodes, we can take a year, six months, you know, it depends on how many episodes. Whereas an episode is usually like under two weeks, and a lot of times when you're filming them, you start crossing. So you'll be finishing filming in one episode and starting another, kind of mixing in scenes and going like that. So it takes about two weeks, a little under. And in terms of memorizing your lines, you know, everyone has their own tactics and how they do it. Typically, you know, you have a schedule so you know it's coming up. So just the night before, you run your lines a lot. Sometimes, some days you have a bunch of scenes, you know, a lot of dialogue, and some days it's really easy. You go and you only have one scene. If there's ever a scene where you maybe have a huge monologue or something that's, that's tough, every actor that's ever worked understands that struggle. So if you go in early, you know, you're running your stuff in hair and makeup, or you knock on their trailer and say, hey, do you mind running this with me? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm freaking out. I don't know it as well as I should. You know, it's, it's not sticking. You know, they're like, yeah, absolutely. And you just run it once or twice and you feel 100% better than when you walked in that morning. Also, you're tired or whatever, you know, just waking up. But also there's rehearsals on set too. So they do lighting rehearsals, state, you know, um, so you run that and you kind of have a little bit of practice before you actually film it. So it's not as hard as you would think. Again, it depends on the project. Some people are, are doing insane amounts of hours. Like Posey had a ton of scenes because he was the main character. So there were days where I would look at his, you know, what he had to learn. I was like, wow, man, that's, that's impressive. Good job, you know, he's crushing it. And then there's some days where you go in and you literally have one line, you know, I, my, one of my first, the first time I ever worked with Arden, I laid on the floor unconscious and didn't speak the entire day. I mean, I was there for hours laying, like I get knocked out and I'm just laying on the floor, dead, <laughs> not dead, but you know, unconscious. And I did that for a whole day. You know, some days are harder than others. If you had to recast your character with someone else on the show, who would you pick and why? So if I had to recast Parrish with someone else that's been on the show? <sighs> oh, easy. Um, there's only been one other Hellhound. Casey Diedrich, he played the second Hellhound, and he's uh, uh, an amazing guy, super talented, so I'd pick him, I mean, no brainer. Easy, bing, bang, boom. Kiss, Mary, kill. Holland, Crystal, Shelley. Okay, first, kiss. Kill, definitely, I would definitely kill her, that's a no brainer, uh, no ifs, ands, or buts, she's dead. Come on guys, I'm not, you can't have me do that. That's my family, you can't, I'm not, no, no. Bad question. Okay, so those were the questions that I had from the previous week when we did the first Q&A and then there were so many of them. These are some more questions from YouTube. So I'm actually gonna read some of the, some of your guys' names. Don't kill me if I pronounce them wrong. <coughs> All right, Felicia Clapier. Did you audition for the deputy hellhound? Definitely. Funny story for me with auditioning for Teen Wolf, I auditioned for season one, two, and three before I got on Parish. So I did a movie called Parish for Bobby, which I've talked about before, and the director of Parish for Bobby was also a director and a producer on Teen Wolf. So I knew about Teen Wolf before it ever was a thing yet. I mean, I, I knew it was coming up. So I auditioned for the season for season one as Scott. Obviously, I don't look anything like Tyler Posey. He's perfect for the role, so he got that. And then I auditioned season two, um, and I auditioned a lot. I mean, there was a, many auditions for the role of Isaac. and. Little did I know that charming Daniel Sharman was auditioning against me. Uh, I was never gonna beat him. Come on, he's so charming and dreamy. I had no chance. <sighs> then season three came around and I auditioned for Parrish and that's how Parrish was born. But yeah, no, I definitely auditioned um, for Team Wolf um, and it was a interesting experience. Auditioning is just weird, it just is. Um, I auditioned on a Friday and I started working that Monday, the following Monday. So if you saw season one, I think it was the bus scene where there was a bomb on the bus, you see Parrish. Uh, I had blonder hair because we didn't have time to dye it from what I had from before. Um, and I was a lot thinner. I, you know, they wanted Parrish bulky. Um, so the previous season when I was auditioning, I was putting on weight and exercising, preparing for that in hopes of getting on the show. With, with Parrish, I auditioned on a Friday and I was like, oh cool, how long do I have until I'm filming? I'll, I'll start putting on weight. And like, you film Monday. Oh, so that's why I also gained weight 
from season one or my first season to the second season because I had some some prep, a little bit of, a little bit of warning. Michaela Sulakova, how was it when you first came on the set of Teen Wolf? Um, you know, when you come to set, you want to, you want to play it, you know, for me at least, I want to play it slow and cool, not to step on any toes. I guess I did that to the extreme where JR thought I didn't like him. <laughs> so I remember, I remember JR saying, when we finally sat down, got to talk, I think it was on one of my first conventions. He was like, I just thought you didn't like me. And I was like, wait, why? Why'd you get that? He's like, you were never talking to me. I was like, no, I just didn't want to interrupt you or bother you or, oh, oh no, you know? So it's, just, it's a weird thing. You, don't, you, you, you never really know where you fit in, but I will say, Right away, which is why I always have a dear spot for Lyndon, the second I came on a set, he took me under his wing and he was like, hey, this is a family, you know, we got you, whatever you need. Um, and it was from then on just kind of steamrolled. And it didn't take long to, to have Team Wolf feel like a home. Daniela Alleman. I'm so used to Paris that you seem like a completely different person. Cool, that's a compliment. Yeah, so Ryan Kelly is this, me, goofy, silly. I like to laugh, I like to, um, I can be an adult if I need to. Yes sir, thank you, man. you know, I can do that stuff. Uh, but uh, Parrish is a Boy Scout, you know, he's he plays it safe, played by the rules, has plans, meticulous about certain things. He's the type of guy, if he goes on a vacation, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., everything's planned. Ryan goes on a vacation, I just wake up and I'm like, what are we doing today? Let's figure it, you know, like I, I, we're completely different people. Parrish has a gun. Ryan should never be trusted with a gun in his life. Uh, so it's fun to do that as an actor, to play things that aren't necessarily you. Midnight Darkness. What Teen Wolf cast member would you have wanted a scene with? <sighs> There's a lot. So through conventions, you know, we've become good friends and he's a great human being and beyond talented actor. Uh, Sinqua, I would have loved to have seen with him. I never got the chance to work with him. Mary Masasi, would Deputy Parrish have made out with Danny if he asked? <laughs> JK, I love Danny and Parrish. I'm just being silly. But real talk, what is something you wish they could have explored with Parrish? Listen, if Parrish and Danny had to make out, I would have made that look good. But they already had enough of that going on. I don't think Paris needed to do that. Uh, Agnes Astolfi. What scene did you have most fun shooting as Parrish? I mean, there's so many. I'd say the one that felt badass was the first time Paris transformed into the Hellhound to save Lydia. Uh, when he goes through the metal gate, you know, being in full costume, having nails, fangs, head to toe makeup and having to act like a badass. It's like, it's like dressing up in Halloween. Like if you're playing a pirate um, and you're dressed like this and you're like, ah, it's not the same as if you're head to toe decked out in a costume, you feel like a pirate. So when I had all that, when you know, when you, when you full a hellhound, you, f I f you feel powerful um, and it's really cool. And the first time I did it was a special moment for me. So I'll always forget that. It was my, f I think my favorite thing to do. Milena Jimenez. Do you like the ship Marish or Stidia? This was a big deal, you guys. When I first started dabbling with Lydia, I was getting death threats. Stidia for life, die, jump off a bridge, Stidia, ah! I, I didn't realize how big ships were, so it was crazy. And I was like, whoa, I'm not, I'm just an actor, ha. Huh? For selfish reasons again, obviously I like Marish. I wanted to, I wanted, you know, to see that grow. But again, it didn't necessarily have to be romantic. It was, it was a lot of it was in Parrish's head. They were dreams of Parrish's head. So it could have just been a really strong friendship. They both were very similar in, in, in the sense of they didn't know exactly, you know, what they were and they're figuring their things out and they're doing it together. So they had that connection. The fan in me that watched Team Wolf before I was on it, I, I, I saw the show. I always be a fan of Stidia like that, you know, the comedic, amazing character relief of the show, getting the girl that he's always wanted. So uh, trust me, I also understand and love the concept of Stidia. One of my favorite scenes in Teen Wolf, it was when uh, Lydia and Styles, Styles was in the other world and they, you know, both basically crying on the wall, back to backs, longing for each other. That was an incredibly powerful scene. And that's Stidia right there, you know, that's not Marish. Uh, Emma Holland, can you raise your eyebrow as the character Jordan Parrish did? Your fans would appreciate it. Can't do that. Uh, only Parrish can do that. Ryan doesn't know how. Corinda Balf. Would it break my heart if you didn't answer my question? Well, I'm answering it right now. I'm not sure that makes sense. <laughs> uh, how did you get into the mindset of doing the role Jordan Parrish? Well, like I said a little bit earlier, Jordan Parrish was a Boy Scout, so I kind of just, you know, play it smart, safe. He, he's by the rules. 
um, you know, military background, so he's very militant, you know, likes order, structure, things like that. So you're just trying to get in that mindset, read your, you know, read your, your lines and kind of think like what someone would do. And then once you kind of become familiar with the character and you've done it for so long, kind of just kind of becomes second nature. Like I said, Parrish is just a very responsible version of Ryan. So I just have to clench my butt cheeks and do things proper. Uh, Manta Ray. Why is Styles Stalinsky so funny? Why is Derek so cool? Why is Scott a werewolf? Why were you in Teen Wolf? Why is Style Scalinci so funny? Uh, it's hilarious character, goofy, I don't know. Why is Derek so cool? Gangster OG Alpha. Why is Scott a werewolf? Got bit by the OG Alpha. Why were you in Team Wolf? Uh, I had a job, Beacon Hill Sheriff's Department. I have no idea. Was I not supposed to be? Ugh. Is that a slap? I hope not. I hope that, why was I in Team Wolf? Like, you know, I've, I've always wanted to be an actor. It's my dream. I got a job. I showed up. Here I am. Ah! That's why I was on Team Wolf, I think. Okay, guys. This is the last question, and I probably got 7,000 different versions, long paragraphs, books sent to me, sometimes short and sweet, whatever it is. This is what I get all the time. I'm going to keep it simple for you guys. Will there be a season seven of Team Wolf? Will there be a season seven of Teen Wolf? Will there be a season seven of Teen Wolf? <gasps> Probably not. I don't know. Uh, you guys, I'm just an actor. I'm just, uh, I'm just an actor. I just played a part in the Beacon Hill Sheriff's Department. That was me. That's it. I'm not a writer. I'm not a producer. I'm not an MGM. I'm not on MTV. The only way to change their minds, you guys, is to, for you guys, you have to bound together. Holland did a video on this, you guys, or the clip, there was a clip that was going around the internet of Holland talking about this, and she's absolutely spot on. You guys have the power. You have to email, uh, tweet, at, whatever it is, MGM, MTV, things like that, Team Wolf, to get it back on the, sh to get it back on the air. I mean, that's the only way it happens. If, if studios feel that they're missing, you know, a lot of times studios stop because of the ratings that go down, or they think it's not cost effective anymore to do the show. You guys have the power to change that. Easier said than done, I know, but I, as an actor, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I can send out a tweet to Jeff Davis right now, like, hey, and he's probably going to go, what? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. Maybe they're in talks a bit right now, but it's not like they're letting me know. And maybe there's a spinoff. That would be cool, right? I have no idea, but you never know. I mean, COVID has done some crazy things. What's going on? Some shows have come back, things like that. But again, you have the power, not me. Thank you guys for hanging out again. I want you guys to like, subscribe. It really does help. We're going to grow this channel together, like I've said a million times. So the more support you can show, the better. This is me finishing my first Teen Wolf Q&A, part one. I'm probably going to do some more. But uh, thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, until the next time, toodles.